Which is better for note-taking, Notion or OneNote? Both apps are well known as a note-taking app, but they do have their distinct differences in terms of features, usability, and more. In this video, we wanted to compare and contrast both apps so that you can ultimately decide which app is most suited for your note-taking needs. If you find this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. The first thing we wanted to talk about is how notes are formatted in Notion versus OneNote. So here in Notion, we can simply type some notes here and you can do a variety of things such as turning it into different headings and things look more like this when you are adjusting the text. And if you want to edit this further, you can also add these very basic things like this and change the color through here. And for example, if you want to add a image, you could do slash image and choose images from here. But everything is based off of blocks, so you can just drag it around and everything you can add is pretty much here. So you can add text, you can add sub pages, to do lists and more. And you can even add a database inside here if you'd wish as well for keeping track of tables and so on. But for basic note taking, you're likely just going to be typing into here and it's pretty simple layout. This is what OneNote looks like. And here, as you can see, it's quite flexible in terms of how your format looks like. So if you type your notes here, you can just move this around. So it's not really a block format, but you can just uh, drag it around. And not only that, you can add paper styles like this, change paper colors like this. And one of the biggest features that Notion doesn't have is that you can actually draw directly inside here. So if you wanted to draw, you can also draw like this. And what's great is that if you're working with a tablet, this can be super useful if you like to do written notes. But unfortunately, Notion does not have this capability. So in terms of formats, OneNote is definitely ahead because you can draw on it. You can add text like this in boxes. And if you wanted to, for example, add something like a screenshot picture, print out file, you can add a table and it's quite versatile. You can also add to do. So if you started typing here, your shopping list, you could simply add to do lists like this. So there's so much you can do in terms of how you structure your notes page and format it. And this really mimics how you could feel if you actually had a physical notebook. So definitely this uh, format structure makes a lot of sense. And not only that, the dictation here as well is really great. So if I were to dictate here, I can just simply click this and start talking and it's going to be listening and it will work that way. So I can start talking and it's going to write it down as notes. And it's quite accurate. So as you can see, it worked really well. So if you want to save time or you're on the go and you want to record notes, this also works really well. So in that sense, OneNote is quite flexible. The next aspect we wanted to talk about is how things are structured. So in Notion, things are very, very free. So you can do whatever you want on the page. There's no real rule in terms of how to structure it. So when you first start a Notion page, it just looks like this. And that can be really great, but it can also make it a bit difficult in terms of what you do with it. So for example, if you wanted a very simple note-taking database, you would probably do something like slash table and choose a table view database and add plus new database, sample notes like this, and then note one. And then you would open it up and write your notes inside. So it takes a little bit of setup like this and it can be a bit daunting when they're called databases if you're simply trying to just take notes. And for example, we built this digital journal where we already pre-structured it for people who want to use it. And even this would be very complicated to build if you're new. So in that sense, Notion can be very free in terms of its note-taking structure. 
Then in OneNote, although it's very free form inside of a note page itself, it's very, very structured in terms of how the notebooks work. So you basically have sections and then you have pages inside the section. And that's very similar to what you would do if you had a real notebook. You would put tabs for your sections and then you would have different pages inside. And all you need to do to add a section is just click add section, just name it new section. And you can start immediately just writing in notes here and just begin like that. So the setup required is way simpler with OneNote in the sense that it's structured in a way that makes sense for a note taking app. Notion on the other hand can be many different things, which is why it's built this way. And that can be a great thing, but also it can be a bit difficult. You can add many, many things to Notion and make it as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. So it's really up to the user when it comes to Notion. So the next important feature we wanted to talk about to compare the two note taking apps is the Web Clipper, as it's really useful when you're searching online to be able to save your web pages inside your notebooks. So if we go to Notion's Web Clipper and we want to save this recipe, we can simply click save page and add it to sample notes. So there's no additional options for this. There's just one format. And now we see here the URL and basically it's formatted like this to fit Notion. So let's see what it looks like when we use OneNote. So it's similar. We have a Chrome extension here, which lets us to save it to our OneNote. And we can basically choose full page, region, article or bookmark. So if we just choose it as an article, it's going to reformat it like this. So that it's very easy to read and what's cool is you can even highlight it with this highlighter in that moment and even add a note so in terms of functionality OneNote is much better in terms of its web clipper so let's go ahead and add a note great recipe so we can just highlight it like this just to see what it looks like so now i'm going to click clip so here we see the recipe like this and you can even move it around and we can even see the part that we highlighted. We see the note that we made. So in that sense, the OneNote Web Clipper is really great. The next aspect we wanted to talk about is its sharing features. So one of the strong points of Notion is its shareability and working together. So if we click share here, you'll see that we can actually share it to web. So you see here that if you click publish, you can publish and now it's basically a link and we even have our custom domain like this so that it is branded with the organized notebook, which is great. And it kind of works more like a website. You can set link expiration, allow editing, allow commenting, allow duplicate as template and even search engine indexing if you're on the plus plan. So this is really useful uh, feature of Notion if you wanted to share your notes. So OneNote, on the other hand, if we click share, we can see that we can invite people to the notebook. We can copy link to the notebook, send a copy of the page, and we can see how it is with the sharing settings, anyone with a view link. So as you can see, the options are a little bit more limited. So obviously you can just click copy link and then send a view only or view and edit. But there doesn't seem to be any kind of comment functionalities here. So in that sense, definitely Notion has better sharing functionalities. The next thing we wanted to cover is ease of use. So once you set up Notion, it's actually very easy to use. So for example, if this was our notes database, we would just click plus here and then note one. But what gets really complicated is when you want to start to organize it in more complex ways or if you wanted to build your pages and sort of have all sorts of blocks in one spot, then it can get quite complicated. You can also relate two databases together. So if you had two note databases, you can connect the two together and things like that. So Notion can get a lot more complicated, but the basic features is quite simple. So you can just type slash and then have all of your options come up and just start typing notes. 
OneNote is also very simple to use. So you can just type anywhere and then move it around. So it's very, very intuitive, simple to use note taking. And if you're familiar with Microsoft, you'll be able to easily see this layout very easily and be used to it because in Notion, they kind of hide all of these kind of options. And not only that, you can really change the fonts and things like that. So it can feel a lot more familiar than Notion if you're used to Microsoft. So the next thing we wanted to mention is about offline mode. So Notion at the moment doesn't really have offline mode. It will let you sort of keep typing even if you're offline, but only if it's loaded and it's very unsecure in the sense that it could just get lost. But with OneNote, you can actually keep your notes offline and then it's going to get saved to the cloud once you do have internet. So if it's really important for you to take notes that are secure and that works offline, for example, if you fly a lot and don't have access to the internet, OneNote might be a better option. And finally, we wanted to cover briefly about Notion and OneNote's pricing model. So. Notion is free to use and you can basically get a lot out of the free plan. And the only reason we would recommend you to upgrade to the plus plan would be if you want unlimited file uploads. So you can basically upload anything to your Notion pages with the plus plan and you can also invite guests to your workspace. And if you're interested, you can also add on Notion AI if you need help with your writing for your notes as well. And then for OneNote, it's basically free download as well. And you can get a lot of features out of that. And the only thing that is blocking your OneNote experience without paying would just be the storage space. So if we see here, you can see that with the paid plan, you get more storage, cloud storage. And of course, there's also for business as well. But the main difference is definitely the cloud storage if you have a paid Microsoft plan. In conclusion, we feel that OneNote and Notion can both be a great place to keep your notes. Notion provides more flexibility in terms of keeping your notes and how you can structure them. But if offline mode is a necessity for you, along with a simple and easy to use structure, you might want to stick with OneNote. Either way, they are both free to use, so we highly recommend you to try them both out to see which feels better. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts on Notion versus OneNote and which have you tried? If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know and we hope to see you in the next video.